with the new hero mage being added to the game to Pucky to getting the first MVP tier skin. Not only that, two new talents are added too. So without any further ado, let's dive straight to the video. Hi guys, Kazuki here and in this video we are going to talk about patch note 1.8.70 and everything that it came up with. Before we jump into today's content, I have a quick note to share. It's amazing to see your engagement and how much you are enjoying our videos. Yet, a surprising 63.5% of our daily viewers haven't subscribed. Subscribing is a simple step that makes a big difference, ensuring you are always notified about our time-sensitive special events, so you don't miss out on any benefits. If you haven't subscribed yet and enjoy our content, please consider doing so now. It's free, quick and keeps you connected with all our offerings. Thanks for your continued support. Now let's get to the heart of today's video. Let's start the video off with the hero number 125 Zuzin. I have already made a full video covering everything that you are supposed to. Check the video out to find out how she performs in a real game. But let me just glance over her skills. Her passive allows her to restore the mana she uses to use her second skill gradually. Also her maximum mana won't scale with level as she already has high mana. Her first skill deals damage over a faint shaped area, dealing damage and steals enemies movement speed. The skill applies 3 sticks of soul snare. Next we have her second skill. When you hold her second skill, she casts lantern over an area, dealing damage and applying stakes on soul snare. When soul snare reaches 10 stakes, the enemies are lifted from the ground. When you release the skill, the enemies goat are thrown in the direction you release the skill while dealing damage. And finally we have her ultimate. When cast, she blinks and starts levitating, creating a field and applying soul snare and dealing damage. With the new hero skills done, let's move on to the old hero adjustments. Ling is now receiving a strategic shift. His attack speed is reduced from 80% to 40% to balance his early and late game performance. But instead, his basic crit chance is increased from 1.5 to 1.6 times, enhancing his critical hit potential. The skill 1's crit chance is buffed, it now is 2.5% in the early game and 12.5% in the late game, up from 2.5% to 10% for more critical hits. His skill 2 is also adjusted. Physical bonus increased by 27% and energy cost reduced by 5. Wall uses no longer cost energy, but HP recovery and crit damage slowing effects have been removed. Ruby is receiving some fine tuning. Base spell vamp has been removed. Ruby's passive 10% spell vamp has also been removed. Altering how she sustained battle in the early game, she now has to rely more on emblems and talent. Her skill 1 slow duration has also been reduced from 2 seconds to 1 second, as the cooldown of her first skill is low. Eve is being buffed to improve her clear. The skill 1 is receiving a buff. Her central area's extra effects have been removed. The first skill's damage is increased by 150 in the early game and 200 in the late game. The extra magic power is also buffed by 60%. The cooldown has also been reduced by 1 second. Joe Head has received some adjustments aimed at team utility. His passive has undergone some adjustments. Each stake of mecha suppression now increases the amount of basic attack damage Joe Head deals. It also increases the allies' damage dealt to them. Tigrel is receiving some nerves because of his CC. His ultimate has undergone a nerve. Total stun duration is reduced by 0.7 seconds, reducing his crowd control capabilities. Matilda has received some nerf. Her skill 2 has received a nerf. The base shield was reduced by 150 in the early game and 200 in the late game. Her ultimate has also received some changes. The cooldown increased by 15 seconds. However, hitting an enemy hero during her ultimate sprint reduces its cooldown by 40%. 
Mia has received some damage in trees. Her skill 2 has received some buffs. Aero damage increased by 10 in the early game and 25 in the late game. The total physical attack has also been increased by 5%. Joy has received some gameplay revision. Her ultimate has received some adjustment. Control immunity is replaced with slow immunity. It also has a new effect, the damage dealt now will no decrease over time. Lolita has received some buffs. Her passive has undergone some buffs. Grants an extra stake of shield to herself and nearby allies after casting skills. Skill 1 cooldown, reduced from a flat 10 seconds to 10 to 7.5 seconds. Masha has received some buffs. Her attack range has been increased by 0.2. Base attack is also raised by 21 points. Her skill 2's cooldown is now reduced by 7 seconds in the early game and 4 seconds in the late game. Farsa also have received some buffs. Her skill 2's base damage increased from 100 in the early game and 50 in the late game. Some heroes have received buffs because of the nerf on the purple buff, so let's go over them. First on the list is Alice. Kneel and offer your life to me. Her mana region now doubled, increased by 1.5 points. Enjoy your last moments. Since it has been increased, her old effect of double mana region in battles against heroes has been removed. Next up is Akai. Her skill 1's mana cost has been reduced by 20 in the early and late game. Likewise, the mana cost for skill 2 has been decreased by 15 in the early and late game. Next, we have Karina. Skill 1's mana cost has seen a reduction, dropping by 20 in the early game and 45 in the late game. Continuing the trend, Skill 2's mana cost is also reduced by 15 in the late game. Next is Lunox. Skill 1, Power of Order is buffed. Mana cost dramatically reduced from 60 to 85 to 30 to 55 offering more flexibility and sustainability in her light and dark balance. Similarly, the dark counterpart of her skill 1 sees a mana cost reduction from 50 to 90 to 30 to 55, enabling more liberal use of her abilities to control the battlefield. Surprisingly, next on the list is Lazily. Skill 1 is buffed. Energy cost now starts at 30 and decreases to 25 at all levels, allowing for more strategic placement and uses. Skill 2 is buffed. The energy cost for Skill 2 is also reduced from a flat 40 to a range of 40 to 35. Lancelot is also in this list. Skill 1 is buffed. The mana cost has been adjusted for better early game management, reduced by 10 in the early game and 20 in the late game providing a smoother scaling into the late game. Skill 2 is buffed. Mana cost is reduced by 60 in the early game and increased by 5 in the late game. Up next is Roger. As human forms, Skill 1's mana cost has been reduced by 20 in the early and late game. Similarly, in wolf form, the mana cost of Skill 1 has been lowered from 60 in the early and late game. Next is Fanny. Her skill 2 has been buffed. Energy cost has been slightly reduced from by 1 in the early game and late game. The ultimate skill now consumes less energy, dropping by 5. Bane's Cannon Barrage. A skill 1 is buffed. Mana cost is now even more friendly, dropping by 10, making his artillery strikes more frequent. Skill 2 is buffed. Following suit, 
Skill 2's mana cost has been dialed down by 10 in the early game and 35 in the late game, allowing Bane to sustain his presence and pressure on the high seas. Next up, we have Amon. Skill 1 is buffed. Mana cost was reduced by 20 in the early game and 30 in the late game, enhancing his stealth and attack fluidity. Skill 2 sees a significant mana cost reduction from 110 to 80 to 50 to 80. Esmeralda has received some buff. Skill 1's mana cost has been reduced by 20 in the early game and 30 in the late game. Likewise, Skill 2's mana cost has been reduced by 45 in the early game and 30 in the late game. Let's move to all the battlefield adjustments. First, we have the changes made to the items. Skypiercer has been nerfed. You now lose 30% of all the stakes instead of 8 whenever you die. Rose Gold Meteor's price has been decreased to 1820. Not only that, Magic Blade's price has also been reduced to 1050. Next, let's check out all the adjustments made to the emblems. First, we have the new talent called Temporal Rain. The next ultimate cast reduces the cooldown of all the other XE skills by 50%. Nice. We have another talent called Warcry. This talent increases the damage by 8% per 6 seconds whenever you do 3 consecutive basic attack. You can find both new talents in the common emblem. Let's check out all the adjustments made to the existing talents. Brave Smite now activates when you do a skill damage and the HP recovered is also reduced by 1%. Killing spree, killing an enemy will now recover 15% of the maximum HP instead of the old 10. Weakness finder now slows enemy movement speed by 90% and attack speed by 50%, but the duration is reduced by 0.5 seconds. The purple buff has been nerfed. The creep rewards when you kill it have been reduced. The buff's mana cost has been reduced by 20% and the energy cost by 5%. Now let's check out all the other changes made. Okay. The performance is optimized when heroes use invincibility skills. There is now a new equipment for Carmilla. It's called Resonating Heart. I would love to show you, but I can't find Carmilla anywhere. Maybe she ran away with Susan. Here's what it does. When purchased, it cancels the broken heart ban when Moonlit Waltz was purchased. The categorization of special equipment has been optimized. Now you can find them in equipment movement. The blocking mechanism has also been optimized. It's now much less likely to get stuck. Moving on to weekly free heroes. The weekly free heroes from 22nd to 29th of March are as follows. The extra free heroes for Starlight members are as follows. Moving to surveys. First, we have Tamu's upcoming epic skin surveys. Design 1 will be called Lord of Shattered Stars. This design features Tamu as a dazzling beast that looks like it leaped out of fantasy. It's covered in spikes and has an almost electric glow in pinks, purples, and blues, all set against a deep dark backdrop. Design 2 will be called Lord of Raging Tides. Here's a striking image of Tammuz that looks ready for battle. It's good armor plating and is saturated with dramatic purples and fiery reds that make it pop against a pitch black background. Design 3 will be called Lord of the Ruptured Void. In this, Tammuz looks like a ruler of the cosmic abyss with its deep blue and purple armor and electric yellow essence that stand out in the void of space behind it. Secondly, we have Tigreal's upcoming special skin surveys. Design 1 will be called Guardian of the Stars and Moon. Check out the Tigreal's Noble Warrior theme design, where he looks ready for an epic showdown. He is decked out in fancy gold and blue armor. 
with a huge symbol stamped hammer and shield that looks like they mean business. Design 2 will be called Heart of the Brave. He looks like he got stories to tell and battles to win. He is wearing a bright red cape and cloak with snazzy blue trouser and he's got a loot slung over his shoulder, probably for victory tunes. And that shield with the stars on it, it's as stylish as it is sturdy. Let's dive into Granger's introduction. What can I say? Everything about this intro is just too good. The attention to details on Granger is amazing. From his outfit to the gun and the demonic briefcase. And then these Hayabusa on the top of shrine that just impressive details. Now let's examine his skill effects. Is this how his basic attack will look? It's really nice and well crafted. The bullets bear symbols and oh, the final bullets on it effect is stunning. Moving on his first skill. Those demonic hands are so cool and the on it effect is just perfect. For the final bullet of his first skill, he opens his demonic briefcase revealing multiple demon hands. Guys, this skin is totally worth it. I can't wait for its release. Next, his second skill appears to be propelled by the demon's hand, maintaining the high quality of the other skills. And finally, his ultimate. The first bullet creates a red explosion filled with demonic energy, ending with an exorcist symbol and demon hands. The second bullet is similar, but impressive nonetheless. The stance during the ultimate is cool. The final bullet yet to be launched looks incredible. And when it's fired, the skill effects are just next level. Now on to Hayabusa, his intro is captivating, with so much going on, it's hard to keep up. The details are incredible. His first skills Konai looks like luster on the throw, but impressive on return, seeming to come from an exorcist dimension. His second skill reminds me of Itachi. With the flashy art style that many will love, the retreat isn't much but it looks smooth. His ultimate is visually stunning. Hayabusa becomes a snake, penetrating enemies while also performing his signature sword swing. After reviewing all this, I'm sure you are dying to see the skill effects in video form. I know I am too. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out when I get my hands on it. Moving on to other updates, here's the full artwork of Zuzin featuring her levitating through the city of Zuan. Lastly, we have the confirmed information of the new MVP tier skin which a will feature Pakitos for, for being the final MVP player pick in the M5 World Championship. So are you excited about this news? Comment down your thoughts. That will be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Keep supporting Kazuki Official.